A lot of you have asked for recommendations on a budget 4K video editing laptop. You've said you want a laptop that can handle 4K video editing, but you'd prefer not to pay more than $1,000 at most for that laptop. Some of you are just getting started with video editing, and some of you are just getting started on YouTube, and you'd rather not pay any more than you have to in order to edit 4K video. 4K video is notoriously taxing on a computer, and it usually requires some pretty high specifications. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the best budget laptop for editing 4K video. Now, before I talk about this laptop, I would like to go over who I recommend a budget 4K video laptop for, and who I would not recommend this for. Simply put, a budget 4K video editing laptop is great for you if you want to do light editing. I define light editing as adding footage to a timeline, rendering that footage, doing some simple cuts and edits on it, some light color correction, and then exporting your finished product. A budget 4K video editing laptop is great for these purposes when having the fastest and the best does not matter all that much. Now overall, this laptop was quite impressive with export and rendering times, but of course it's still not as fast as a high-end laptop or desktop. If you're editing a few videos a week or want a thin portable laptop for editing when you're away from home, this laptop is perfect for you. Now this laptop is not for you if you want to do heavy video editing that involves a lot of color correction or a lot of special effects, or if you're editing daily or multiple projects a day, the extra rendering and export time, even if it's only five to 10 minutes per project, it would quickly add up for you. And I would not recommend this. I would recommend you purchase a higher end laptop or desktop. And if you're interested in building a high end desktop, I've linked to a video above where I discuss the best hardware for video editing desktops. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about the criteria I established before searching for the laptops that I tested. The first criteria I applied was the laptop needed to cost less than $1,000. The laptop would also need to have at least the following specifications. A one terabyte NVMe drive, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and an Intel or AMD CPU would be able to handle 4K footage with relative ease. In laptops, this means at least a 10th gen Intel i7 CPU, or at least a fourth gen AMD Ryzen 5 CPU. Now finding laptops that met these criteria for less than $1,000 quickly narrowed the field. Here in my hand is the winner of the best budget 4K video editing laptop for less than $1,000. The laptop I'm holding is the Asus VivoBook Flip 14. First, I'm gonna talk about this laptop and what the real world test results were. Next, I'm gonna talk about what I like and what I don't like about this laptop. And finally, I'm going to let you know which devices place second and third to this laptop. So this specific Asus Flipbook model is the TM420U. I picked this up from Costco for a mere $799. And trust me, when I grabbed it for this price, I thought, A, it's too good to be true, or B, somebody made a pricing mistake. This laptop does come equipped with a fast one terabyte NVMe drive, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it sports brand new AMD Ryzen 5700U CPU. The 5700U is an eight core, 16 thread CPU, that has a base clock speed of 1.8 gigahertz and will turbo boost all the way up to a blazing fast 4.3 gigahertz. The CPU, which is technically also an APU, also features the AMD Radeon RX Vega 8 integrated graphics. This laptop comes with a 1080p screen with 250 nits of brightness and a built-in webcam. The screen is also touchscreen and it will rotate 360 degrees. So you can use this device as a tablet and you can rotate it back and use it as a laptop. For ports, this laptop has has two USB-A ports, one USB-C port, a micro SD card slot, it has a full-size HDMI port, a combination audio jack, and a dedicated power jack for the AC adapter that comes with the laptop. The keyboard is also backlit and has the chiclet key design. This laptop weighs a little over three pounds and is about three quarters of an inch thick when closed. Okay, now that we've talked about the specs, let's dive into the video editing test results. I used Adobe Premiere Pro to do my testing because Adobe Premiere Pro is a widely used product and it's a good representation of the performance of hardware when video editing. For my testing, I rendered five minutes of footage from each of the four devices and recorded the amount of time it took for each one to render. I then did an export on all 20 minutes of footage and also recorded the time it took to export. The footage I tested was from the iPhone 12 mini, the Fuji X-T3, the DJI 
Mavic 2 Pro drone and the GoPro Hero 9 Black. The footage from each of these cameras uses modern codecs and is a great way to test the processing power. These modern codecs tend to require more CPU power in order to render and export. Therefore, I tested these because if the CPU can handle these, it can definitely handle any other codecs that are older than these. Let's talk about those render time results. Five minutes of iPhone 12 4K footage with a 120 megabit per second bit rate. The render time took eight minutes and 47 seconds. For the five minutes of Fuji X-T3 4K footage with a 200 megabit per second bit rate, the render time was eight minutes and 58 seconds. For five minutes of the DJI Mavic 2 Pro 4K footage with a 100 megabit per second bit rate, the render time was eight minutes and 49 seconds. And finally, the five minutes of GoPro Hero 9 Black footage with a 120 megabit per second bit rate had a render time of nine minutes and two seconds. The total render time for all 20 minutes of 4K footage was 35 minutes and 36 seconds. Next, let's talk about the export time results. The total export time for 20 minutes of 4K footage with the finished product being a 4K video with a 100 megabit per second bit rate was 26 minutes and 53 seconds. I must say those render and export times are pretty impressive for a 14 inch Ultrabook that cost only $800. Next, let's talk about what I like and don't like about this laptop. I only recommend things I have ever tested and I also like to be straight with you on what I like and don't like so that you can make an informed decision. First of all, I love the price to performance ratio. The performance I got out of this laptop for a mere $800 was quite honestly very surprising to me. I did not expect such great results with this and honestly I thought I would be sending this back. I did not expect this one to be the winner because this was actually the lowest priced one that I tested. The size is another great feature of this device. It's thin, it's light, and it's quite portable. I would have no problem traveling with this device. It would be easy to pack. I also like the fact that this laptop has a touchscreen and that you can rotate the screen 360 degrees. While I don't find the touchscreen to be useful while video editing, I do find it to be useful for other tasks that I do on this machine. And it is nice to be able to rotate the screen and use it as a tablet when I want to preview my finished product or when I just want to watch something on it. The backlit keyboard is also a great feature and something I prefer in any laptops I own. But I'd also like to talk about what I don't like on this laptop. There are two main items that came to mind. Neither of them was a deal breaker for me, and I did know both of them going into this, but I do want to mention them. The first is the brightness of the screen. The LCD is 250 nits. Now, 250 nits is pretty common on a laptop, uh, especially at this price point, that's quite good. And it's not a problem if you're gonna be video editing inside, but if you wanted to video edit outside and it's in the middle of the day and very bright, a screen brightness would not be enough. You would not be able to clearly see your footage and basically it would be impossible to video edit outside. Now, if you're like me, you probably don't edit outside a whole lot, but it is nice to have that option if I wanted to sit out, for instance, on a balcony at a hotel and edit well and enjoying the outdoors. So I do want to mention that so that you're aware. The other item I don't like about this laptop does not directly relate to video editing, but it is the wireless card. This laptop has a Realtek AC wireless card, and this particular card I find to not be all that reliable. Uh, the Wi-Fi speeds tend to be a little bit slower, and I find it to not always have the greatest connectivity. Sometimes I find it taking a while to connect, and other times I find the connection randomly dropping. So what I did to address this is I purchased an Intel AX 200 Wi-Fi 6 wireless card. It cost a mere $25 and it's really easy to replace on this model. You just take off some screws on the back panel and the card is right here underneath and you just pop it out and pop in the new card, connect the two antennas, and then when you power it back up, Windows will install the driver, you restart, and it's good to go. The Realtek card is functional, but I prefer a card that works even better. To me, the extra $25 to upgrade the card was not a big deal, considering this laptop was only $800 to begin with. Oh, and yes, I'm keeping this laptop. I liked it so much for the price that I'm hanging on to it. I'm now going to briefly mention the two other devices that I tested that place second and third to the Asus. For second place is the Lenovo Flex 5 Ultrabook. The configuration I tested had a 10th gen Intel i7 CPU and otherwise similar specs. The render and export times were not quite as fast as the Asus, but they were similar. The Lenovo device was a little bit bulkier. It weighed about four pounds and it was a little bit thicker at closer to an inch. The cost was also 900 at the time I priced it. So it was hundred more than the Asus without any noticeable performance gains. However, the device did have a slightly more rugged feel 
and I did like that about it. For the third place device, I have the Dell G5 15SE laptop. The configuration I tested had the AMD Ryzen 4800H CPU. This laptop did offer similar render and export times to the Asus. However, this laptop was much heavier and thicker than the Asus and the Lenovo. It weighed nearly six pounds and it was more than an inch thick. The cost of the Dell device was also $1,000 when I tested it. I will also note that if you don't need to have a one terabyte NVMe drive, and you're good with a 512. Most of these models do offer options with the 512 gigabyte drive at a slightly lower price. I have provided links in the description below to the Asus laptop that I recommend, and I've also provided links to the other two devices that place second and third to the Asus. I've included links for Costco, and I've included links for some other retailers in case you don't have a Costco membership. If you found this video to be useful, please hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe and bell notification button, and you'll be notified every time I publish a new video. Video. Until we talk again, happy video editing.